Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to the end of the weekend. It is the Earth Master out here, Sunday, June 9th, 2024, about 12.33 p.m. here. California time, 2.33 p.m. Central time here in Texas. 4.0, the latest earthquake here off the coast of Japan. We did see uh, quite a bit of movement down here in the southern Pacific today. A uh, pretty decent swarm of activity out here in the oceanic uh, divergent zones, divergent boundaries out here. The separation of the seafloor, seeing uh, at least one six pointer, 6.2. Uh, looks like we did see some other earthquake activity prior and after the six pointer as well. Quite a few fives stirring up out there uh, early this morning. So keeping an eye on things, obviously, with this type of adjustment here, uh, that could tell us that, uh, you know, we could be looking at maybe some further movement out here across the Pacific Plate. It has been quite active here recently. Uh, in several locations. Now, looks like we did see some earthquake activity last night further out here uh, into the Pacific Antarctica Ridge. This one was from last night here, low 4.5. Let me see if we got anything else brewing out here. Uh, just that decent swarm of activity out here from this morning. No elevated movement there across New Zealand for now, but uh, I do want to double check the New Zealand area and see what we have. I wasn't going to, but I forgot I don't have the EMSC model here on the globe, at least not on this computer. It looks like two days ago, the last uh, registered earthquake, a 2.4. Of course, the all magnitudes here would show all the microquakes out here. Uh, quite a bit of deeper movement stirring up underneath the North Island area once again, it looks like. Mainly smaller microquakes, but. Uh, Obviously, it's something to keep an eye on as things have been quite active in terms of deeper movement underneath this area. Uh, around the Tonga Trench area, some movement uh, stirring up out here from yesterday. Really nothing new, at least as far as today's activity goes uh, there in that region. Most of the new activity there across the uh, New Guinea region. It looks like Papua New Guinea did see a five-pointer just outside that area here, north of the Solomon Sea, a 5.7 coming in. Uh, following this earthquake activity way down south here. So definitely looks like we may be getting some adjustment going on here across the Pacific Plate. Uh, further up north here, there's that uh, four-pointer into the coast of Japan. Nothing really going on here uh, as far as large-scale movement goes across this area of the world. Mostly some older movement in there from yesterday. A little bit of activity up north there onto the top of the globe. Uh, looks like a 4.6 from last night. South America area seen some uh, smaller earthquake activity and uh, got another little oddball earthquake out here into the uh, plate boundary here between the Pacific plate and the Nazca plate which is right here this is a divergent zone uh, oceanic divergent boundary as well and that uh, looks like it came in following this movement here so it does look like we got quite a bit going on underneath this area ultimately that could enhance uh, not only regions to the west here, but also around the uh, Peru-Chile Trench where we expect a lot of the momentum from activity like this uh, to head towards. It's a general plate motion here of the Nazca plate to scoot off towards the east here following activity where we're seeing that today. Uh, California, let's see what we got going on out here in California. It's holding steady, nothing big. I'm hoping it will hold off until I get home, which will be here in a couple days. Uh, movement in Northern California, fairly quiet, but we still have a whole bunch of tremor up here on the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. This is from yesterday, 530 epicenters of tremor. That's quite a bit, right? Uh, these numbers are actually going up here. If we look at the last, I need to go back the last two weeks here. We'll go the uh, June 27th to today's time period. So that's roughly about two weeks right here. Uh, and this is a number that keeps going up and up and up. And the majority of these are confined here into the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Look at that. We got uh, over 5,000 epicenters of tremor in the last two weeks here along the Cascadia subduction zone. It's not spread out all over the place. It's specifically combined or confined here to the southern end of the Cascadia. And this is where we've been seeing some earthquake activity here recently. Uh, now I know on the weekends here the USGS really doesn't show these smaller quakes out here so that's probably why we're not seeing anything showing up on the map. Um, they'll probably add them tomorrow hopefully but as you can see here last week um, before the weekend was upon us uh, quite a bit of deeper activity here 
into the southern end of the Cascadia, including this 4.3 right smack dab on the subduction zone level itself. So got to watch that. That's quite a bit of interesting movement taking place here and specifically down on the southern segment here of this major subduction zone. And uh, the Cascadia doesn't have to see a full rupture uh, to produce a damaging earthquake. There has been historical partial ruptures here of the Cascadia that have been um, documented and whatnot historically. And they, they can run anywhere from an 8.1 up to an 8.4 here on the southern end. That would include Northern California and the southern end here. Uh, southwestern corner of Oregon. There's a lot more dynamics here in this area. You got a divergent zone. This is a separation of the seafloor as well, creating those ridges, ultimately applying more stress up here to this end uh, than, say, for example, up north here across the entire length. Um, and it averages around 300, about 3 to 350 in terms of years, maybe a little bit higher depending on who you talk to. But it's been 324 years since the last full rupture, but we could easily see a partial rupture out here uh, if things are continuing to go like they are. I mean, that's quite a bit of trimmer. Obviously, when we get further trimmer activity here into this region, that means that stress is building upstream here, like just like what, what we seen last week with that 4.3. Uh, that's just a little quake compared to what this southern end of the Cascadia can produce. So we'll continue to watch that. We'll see if they add any quakes out here tomorrow once they get through um, in the office and whatnot, uh, they'll add the quakes here to this area. Because I find it kind of hard to believe that there are no quakes following all this trimmer activity. Uh, Sacramento Valley area did see a 2.7 early this morning. Uh, fairly deep though, about 18 kilometers deep underneath this area in an odd zone. Not really up against the Sierra Nevada Mountains, it's more underneath the Sacramento Valley here, which is kind of odd. So definitely some interesting movement. And we got some further activity here uh, just south of the Bay Area with a three-pointer coming in outside the Gilroy area and a handful of smaller quakes uh, in that area as well from today. That is just off the San Andreas Fault. And, you know, it's it's been quite active out here recently in terms of specific little swarming regions here, and it continues today. Uh, this activity from yesterday here, where we did see that 3.3. Looks like we did see another 1.2 in this little area of Southern California uh, today so far, but uh, not a whole lot of specific swarming that I see today, aside from very small microquakes. But either way, we're continuing to watch California here. Uh, it has been quite active. Uh, let's see the rest of the map out here. Very minimal movement up in Kansas. Oil fields out here getting hit in Texas. Quite a bit of oil fields here south of the San Antonio area. As you see on the satellite view here, if we zoom in, um, I'm sure we can spot some of those. They're kind of hard to spot uh, unless you zoom right in here. Most of these are going to look like little wastewater disposal facilities here with a little pond on them. And of course some oil tanks that uh, are out here as well. So definitely seen some movement out here in this area of Texas. Let's see here, Puerto Rico area. Slight movement over here across the subduction zone. Did see a 4.2 early this morning north of St. John's. A couple other smaller quakes out here as well. And that's another major subduction zone area capable of producing some large earthquakes. Uh, a couple fours out there along the Puruchile Trench as noted. And up into Alaska, we were watching a little swarm up here outside the Denali area. Looks like we're still seeing some movement here today, although it uh, looks like it's limited compared to yesterday's activity. 2.0, the latest quake there coming into that region. On the big island of Hawaii, let's see what's up here. Anything major changing? Looks like uh, mostly smaller microquake activity out there across that area for now. Uh, I do want to double check the inflation data here, see what's up in terms of monitoring that volcano. Alright, there we go. Deformation data here at Kilauea Volcano on the big island of Hawaii shows us that we're still going up. Look at that. We haven't even seen a pause yet in the inflation here since our last eruption uh, back on the second or third there of this month. 
very short-lived eruption. It was only about 10 hours long, but look at that. We're still going up, almost matching our previous level here before the uh, eruption took place. So uh, getting back up there, a uh, couple scenarios. You could see some fisher activity open up um, within this region that we most recent seen there on the southwest rift zone, or we could see a displacement of magma further off here to the upper east rift zone, or maybe even further. Got to watch that because we have been seeing some earthquake activity out here, mainly um, to the southeast there towards the upper east rift zone. Let me bring up the um, USGS map here once again. I mean, there's not a lot, but there has been a few little locations out here showing some elevated movement. And of course, you got the Helena slump out here. Uh, you know, it's right now it's super dynamic. It's hard to say exactly what's going to happen. Just got to monitor it, watch it, see how it plays out. And of course, right now, um, things are just kind of at a standstill. Let's go over here to uh, the space weather activity where we're looking at a little bit calmer conditions here today. Uh, still seeing some proton events stirring up here in the ionosphere across the polar regions, as you can see here on this map. Uh, far as the specific G2 class storm that's forecasted, well, here is the time period, June 10th UTC time between 1500 and 1800 looks to be the KP index of 6 or so. Uh, if we look at the current UTC time, that is going to be 1725 there on the chart. So probably tomorrow night, right? Would that make sense? Tomorrow night we could see that. Here is the uh, tonight's forecast which shows KP index of four, KP index of four. It's a little odd, where's the six at? Tonight's, tomorrow night. All right, well, I mean, this is a forecast. That's what they're showing. They look almost identical and, and the same. Here and see what we got. Yeah, even the official site here, the Space Weather Prediction Center, is still showing the same. So here's tonight, here's tomorrow. It looks like it may be a, a daytime event there, possibly tomorrow uh, when the auroras peak. So maybe that's why we're not really seeing the full brunt of it here on this side, the North American side. Uh, but we'll continue to watch it maybe after dark tomorrow. Uh, and tonight, looks like possibly we could see some auroras up there, mainly across the higher latitudes. All right, uh, no major flares happening right now. Our sunspot of interest is way out there on the southwestern limb of the sun. Goodbye, 3697. I don't know if it's going to make a return trip here. It has weakened quite dynamically, but we'll keep Well, it's weakened quite a lot, I should say. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on it and see if it does pick up any dynamic growth or whatnot as it travels around the far side of the sun once again. And we are left with uh, not a whole lot out here, unfortunately, folks. A couple disorganized regions of sunspots, but that's really about it. Uh, let's see what we got here for the far side of the sun, which is, oh, I just passed it. Here we go. Uh, here's the far side. Doesn't look like there's much out there. 3685, a little weak spot. A couple other spots coming into view here on the eastern limb as well, but literally I don't see anything that's of major interest out here on the far side of the sun because we could be entering into a little quiet spell here in the next couple weeks. All right, Storm Prediction Center, here is the severe outlook today it looks like. Slight risk for some severe weather uh, on the map there. Most of this is just going to be some wind and hail threats from some of these thunderstorms that pop up there in the marginal risk category which is all over the place it looks like, including here in Texas. Uh, tomorrow's outlook shows roughly about the same marginal risk out here. Tornado risk way up into the Dakotas area it looks like. 2% chance. Wind and some hail threats out there as well but uh, overall it doesn't look like we got any significant severe weather events in the forecast for now. Alright folks I'm out of here. Keep an eye on things out here. Um, I'll probably come back a little bit later and do uh, another complete update unless something major happens. Enjoy what's left here of the weekend, and we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on. Stay safe, folks.